Right, people, on what is purportedly going to be the hottest day of the year ever on record in the UK, I thought I've got to get dressed up in full military uniforms so that we can talk about what everyone gets worried about, and that is predators. So predators are everywhere, indoor growing, outdoor growing, there's nothing you can do about it. Until, of course, you then use the four different ingredients that we have found through researching old Victorian gardeners. I mean, we've gone to the ends of the earth to find what is the most amazing natural killer. So I'm gonna go through those things. I'm gonna put them into a sprayer. We're gonna spray some predators and you're gonna see quite how very good it is. Right team, it's now time to look at how to create the ultimate natural predator killer. One that you can feel thoroughly confident that we have trialed many, many times, read many books, looked at lots of YouTube videos and really drilled it down to the perfect thing. We've combined the old time almanacs from Victorian era gardening. Literally, this thing is, without having something that's not natural, is absolutely on the money. So we thought we'd come up with the absolute ripper of a variety when we read about the old time Victorian glasshouse guys and they used to get their cigarette butts, put it in water, boil it up and then they'd use that on the bugs and that was the first use of neonicotinoids. They are now banned in the EU and UK which is understandable because of the bees. We then looked at lots of studies of the essential oils that the people are then talking about, peppermint, tea tree, rosemary, all of those. There were a number of big studies by university and they basically found that actually it's a bit of a spoof. There isn't really actually any evidence on a big study to show that it really did anything. So then you look at garlic and chili oil, which seems to work pretty well and I've seen someone do it and they swear by it but they are doing it on house plants and house plants you really is fine but in edible plants you really don't want your little gem to taste of garlic. Then there's diatomaceous earth which is another crazily weird thing it comes from the fossil remains of algae it's powder form brilliant at killing a lot of stuff but again powder on towers it just doesn't really work so everyone's going to bang on about their perfect killer what we've done though is we've combined as many as we possibly can to try and create the perfect catch-all pesticide which will kill both the adults, the larvae, every single part of the process is covered by these different things we put into this mix. So there is no pesticide out there that can be used on at uh, once and kill everything unless you are fumigating a room which is then going to cause you substantial problems if you eat it there's nothing out there so you need to apply this a number of times probably once a week for maybe a month certain elements of it work over time so you've got to see that this isn't going to be immediate but what it is is an epic bug nuking concoction all of the below will provide you with four times two liters worth of liquid so number one 70 percent rubbing alcohol which is this bad boy here, right? The alcohol will melt the protective wax that covers the central part of the insects and it's going to dry out the soft body parts of others, leading to their demise. Furthermore, alcohol spray tends to draw mobile insects, notably mealy bugs, out of where they're at, making them far easier to control. Many people will use this on its own, but at the same time, again, this is a combination and it won't kill the eggs of certain types of predators. Number two, peppermint castile oil or insecticide oil with uh, peppermint essential oil. This is a rabbit hole of the whole essential oil argument and what we're really doing is doing this in a different level by using that just as a smell to ward off another part of what we're going to put in there. The whole citronella candle thing, thoroughly proven to not work, right? So this stuff is brilliant. In this case, there's also, as I said, there's this ulterior motive of why we're doing it. The biggest kick-ass property of this mixture is insecticidal soap, and it was exactly, again, what the old-time gardeners used. What it does is simply smother the insects and their eggs to the point that they can no longer breathe. It causes the cell wall, a bit like the alcohol, to thoroughly break down on the cuticles, so a little light rubbing alcohol, it also then totally dries it out. So, 
as I said, the peppermint oil is there. It's all a bit of a spoof, right? It's supposed to, of all of the essential oils, it's supposed to, the smell of it will ward off a predator actually landing on the actual uh, plant itself. So that's why we've included it alongside the idea of the fact that the next product is got a bit of a smell to it, right? And there's nothing we can do about that. So trying to mask it is what we're doing with this. So when I say masking the next product, the next product. The next product is this, neem oil. So we've all heard of neem oil in, this, in the industry. Everyone touts on about it, but it really is the wonder oil from killing your dandruff on your head to multiple other internal uses in the house, but also it kills just about every type of predator. So it's an oil that's extracted from the neem tree, which has grown in the Indian subcontinent. Continent. It's a powerful natural insecticide. Its main ingredient is azadiractin, but there are over 300 other compounds that are capable of disrupting the life cycle of insects at all their stages. It is great for the, and it's also confirmed by the organic associations around the world as usable. It basically acts as a hormone disruptor and as an anti-feedant. Neem oil is biodegradable and it's non-toxic to pets, birds, fish, humans in a non-concentrated fashion, right? You've got to, you've got to break it down, but non-concentrated, it's absolutely fine. It's effective against pretty much every pest there is, right? As well as being a natural fungicide that can combat powdery mildew, which is amazing, and other fungal infections in plants. It's like the wonder dr drug as such. It literally pests and pathogens. Therefore, what we're doing is not killing the insect deg, what we're hitting those insects are that we're missing when we spray for the first time. So there's always gonna be a few lurking around, nothing you can do about that, but the neem oil is like a little trap for them. So the ones that are remaining will eat the plant and that will then have them. Right, this one sounds a bit odd, right? And I know everyone thinks of their hair going a very odd color, like white, but this is, in our case, it's called liquid oxygen but it's actually called hydrogen peroxide. This stuff is amazing, right? It's incredibly good adding oxygen into your system. So we recommend putting it in there anyway. It just keeps that oxygen moving in there. But in this case, the composition of this is H2O2, i.e. hydrogen peroxide is two parts hydrogen, two parts oxygen. Unlike water, which is H2O, two parts hydrogen, one part oxygen. So. What that actually means with this is you've basically got a charged ion which acts like a heat-seeking missile towards anything that is organic it comes into contact with. So we're talking larvae, eggs, anything in that water, pythium, root rot, all of it absolutely hammers it, right? Superb on every level. It's such a positive product with just a bit of a dodgy name. The thing with H2O2 is that it breaks down quickly after use. And therefore what we suggest is you can't, you add all three of the products together and then you have to add this in when you're about to use it. So it will sit in a mister for about a week. So keep adding that in every time you're about to do it. So you simply add the same amount every time into your mixture, perfect. Right team, so that is all of the products, right? And it's interesting because neem oil, which is organic, this is cold pressed, you need to get that. That wouldn't work on its own anyway. You need to mix that down with a soap based product anyway. So combining these two things here, it does that anyway, right? So if for some reason you only have neem, you've got to remember that you can't use it on its own. It needs a soap based product to actually break it down so it goes into the water and it doesn't just sit on the top of the water. So that's it. However, a couple of points in regards to the application of what we're talking about, right? Firstly, we need to spray a leaf first. So don't put the product, don't go, right, I've made all my stuff, this is brilliant, and go all over your tower. Because some plants, it can affect. Neem specifically has 
a certain effect and if there's a slight error in your concentration it could seriously damage the plant right so just make sure that you just you know it's almost like painting something where you do a little patch first to make sure whether it works same with this right secondly you need to do all of this when there is no full direct sunlight because basically what happens is with this mixture and actually with water as well if you water in the middle of the day the water will act as a magnifying glass and will potentially burn the plant you've got to do it either first thing in the morning or in the evening so to confirm that this is now done other than the actual mixing of this down which we're going to do as an over the shoulder basically all of these things are natural right okay they look a bit dodgy and whatever but there's nothing in there like the broad spectrum pesticides that big ag will provide you which frankly I, I wouldn't want to put any of that stuff on the food that you eat right this stuff is all natural if you use it you probably want to wash your leaves afterwards um, simply because they may have a touch of a taste with the neem but the neem smell breaks down within three days its potency breaks down within about 48 hours so there is an upfront cost in doing this don't get me wrong you could go to a garden center and buy a pre-made but actually the raw ingredients for this will last you for at least two years and you can easily make up enough to then produce five, well, re remove five major infestations. So if you simply buy more rubbing alcohol, that will be enough for then extending out the, the, uh, the actual uh, mix. Right team, I'm sitting here looking up at you. Frankly, it's so hot. <laughs> I've had to sit down, it's that bad. It's pretty pathetic because I mean where half of you guys are from it's going to be considerably hotter than this but I'm British so I'm totally and utterly thoroughly used to nothing but rain and this is too much so I'm sitting down anyway let's crack on so first of all rubbing alcohol right so the rubbing alcohol is a really important part in terms of taking off the wax off the cuticles so where we're going with that is we're going to put 400 mils into a measuring jar Epic start to the whole process. Right, let's try again. Back on the table, as you can see, I need water, I need something. Anyway, 400 mils, right? So this goes to 250. And actually, so I need to interject. This is a two liter container, all right? So that is perfect. I'm gonna put all of the um, uh, US measurements um, in a comment up here and it'll be there for the whole of this part so you'll have no problem following it anyway so 250 here wow that's nice i can smell it from here so if my mass is correct which i'll be shocked if it is but there we go 150 alcohol done perfect now we're going to move on to the soap and the soap is really important. It is something that would have been used in its own right. We're just combining the ultimate to create you know, a nuclear bomb, but essentially the old timers would just use this. And we've got two varieties actually, both really good. Both of these are bought with peppermint essential oil in them, which is perfect for then not having to go out and buy another product. So we've got the Dr. Bronner's, which is that one. It's a little bit lighter. It's not quite as thick. Um, it's used by many people though, so I, I, I've, I've seen other people using it and recommending it, so I think that's really good. This one we actually found slightly more appropriate. It's a little bit thicker. So that's the um, Dr. Woods. You can buy both of these in the UK, and I actually believe they're American anyway, so you've got no worries with them. So Alex, where are we going with the um, soap amount? 120 mil, sir. And with that, I think I'm actually going to, no, I won't, I'll carry on using that. So let's use the Dr. Woods. It's got a little thing on there. Hundred and twenty mils. Ah, oh, lovely touch. Really, really lovely smell of peppermint. And that will hopefully doesn't do doesn't eliminate it because neem is really powerful. But it goes a distance to then trying to remove that smell. So, hundred and twenty mils. Then 
those, so that's that lot done. Now we're on to the Neem. Where are we going with that, Alex? 1 8. 18 mils. Okay. Um, 18 mil. Now, this is a bit complicated because Neem is very, very thick. And I'm wondering whether actually it may do my OCD a little bit of damage, but I might do that one first, the H202, and then I'll put that one in. So, where are we going on the H202? 10 mils of H202 and don't over egg this, right? This is good enough at 10 mils, five mils per litre for what we need. I think maybe chance, maybe less, there we go. 10 mils, beautiful. Right, and lastly then, the neem oil. How am I doing this, Alex? Should I do it? I'm gonna do it in this pot, actually. Anyway, 18 mils. Oh, that really smells. It's definitely not the nicest of smells, people, but it really, really works. Right, so we are done. That is the epic bomb of a solution. The only thing we obviously now need to do is fill the remaining amount up with water. And you really wanna try and use filtered water if you can. Um, it will make a bit of a difference to because it's going on the plant's leaves, but filter water if you can. It's not the end of the world if you can't. So we're now going to fill this up with water and then we'll be back. Right, people, I believe, thank you, Alex. He's done an extraordinary job of adding water to that. <laughs> Amazing. So look at that, that's the finished product. Now, I'm gonna link all of the ingredients down below so that you can go out, buy it yourself, mix it yourself. This is just so easy to get hold of all of this stuff and really easy to mix as you've just seen. Anyway, it's been an absolute pleasure. See you in the next one.